Welcome to the 25th annual Gartner Security and Risk Management Summit. Can you believe it? This is our silver anniversary. <laughs> this week's conference is the first of seven global gatherings. Gatherings that serve to shape the future of security and risk management for enterprises, large and small, public and private. At Gartner, we offer a unique perspective on the security and risk landscape through tens of thousands of annual interactions with you and your colleagues around the world. A common theme through all these interactions is that the pace of change continues to accelerate. In Gartner's latest digital business survey, 85% of organizations reported actively pursuing digital optimization strategies, while 66% were on the path to digital transformation. That means that most of you are managing rapid digital change, while some of you are already digital to the core. Every enterprise is a technology enterprise. Every department is a technology-driven department. And every leader sees the power of technology to deliver new value and competitive advantage to the enterprise. The promise of cloud, AI, robotics, or blockchain swirl while the rigor of maintaining existing capabilities for identity, data, product or service development, cry out for attention. Our very role has changed as security and risk leaders, whether as a CISO, a manager, or a technologist. No longer are we asked a singular question. How are you providing security and managing risk? we are now asked a more complex question. How are you helping the enterprise realize more value while assessing and managing security risk and even safety? Yes, value is the true north. We relish this more challenging question. It puts us at the center of a compelling digital business story. But we don't want to, and we can't do it alone. We need new tools to do the right thing and to deliver more value, whether revenue growth or mission outcomes, greater efficiencies in the operating model, or new value created by innovation and investments and we also need the enterprise culture that binds it all together. It is our job to impact all of them. Our role is to champion and orchestrate value protection. Our role is to empower value expansion. And we must do this by crafting an elegant balance of freedoms and restrictions, by carefully weighing the giving and earning of trust, by architecting for resilience, by making security and risk a more integrated, adaptive, thoughtful, and valuable part of our enterprise. The best way to bring value to our organization today is to leverage automation. Automation is already all around us. And it is starting to impact the security and risk world in two ways. As I apply automation, it can be a positive enabler. But as I apply automation, I am also introducing new risks. Our goal this morning is to describe the automation continuum. Understanding this continuum will enable you to make smart choices 
for your enterprise. Every automation choice must be conscious and adapted to the current situation as well as adaptable to the future. So this morning, we will tackle the big questions. Why is more automation important and inevitable? How is automation impacting your world? What does it mean for key roles in security and risk management? And then we'll share three short scenarios to help you realize how you can use automation to deliver value. Let's start with the big picture, the changing technology landscape. Please welcome to the stage Gartner Director, Advisor, Beth Shoemaker. In a world of constant change, the impulse can be to bemoan, we're losing control in security. Wouldn't it be easier if things went back to how they were? Well, to start with, it's probably best if we agree that control is not just flying away now. Let's be honest. We never really had control. The difference is that now, with an emerging automation continuum, we don't have to be on the defense when it comes to our lack of control. Instead, automation allows us to be targeted and strategic about how we focus on what matters, how we decide what to empower others to handle, and when to let go. And we need this when we're operating in an environment where 90% of corporate leaders tell us that digitizing is an imperative. 90%. For example, by 2022, marketing professionals will produce more than 30% of their digital content with the aid of AI content generation techniques. So our business units are running full steam ahead in pursuit of initiatives that will help them achieve their objectives. They're likely building solutions without talking to security professionals. They are making technology-related choices every day, often without realizing the risks, implications of what they're doing. The consequence of these business choices, choices over which we have no control and do not always see, can be huge, just as the potential for digital business constantly grows. And in this environment, automation is a crucial tool for us in security to make it easier for our business partners to do the right, secure thing, even when we're not there to see it. Then there's data, what some say is the new oil. Our reliance on data is ever-increasing. It's data that enables you to run powerful analytics. Businesses and governments depend on data for virtually every decision. Yet at the same time, our customers and our regulators demand that we keep that data secure, that we keep their privacy at the forefront. By 2020, archived personal data will represent the largest area of privacy risk for 70% of organizations. And that's quite understandable, considering roughly 2 billion records containing personal and sensitive data were stolen just last year. Automation and data are just the beginning. Emerging technologies will change everything. They will impact security and risk directly because rampant adoption of emerging technologies creates new risks. For example, everyone has been so worried about the security of the cloud that not enough people are focusing how to be secure in the cloud. And the flywheel's just starting. Cyber physical systems, digital twins, immersive technology, quantum computing, they're right around the corner, all of them. So we turn and we try to build a security and risk management team to face all of these demands. And we're confronted with that daunting reality that digital transformation demands even new skills from our security people. And we're in a tight security labor market. So where are we going to find these people? 
Where are we going to find these skills? And if that's the situation, how can we implement an adaptive automation strategy that allows us to best utilize the people and skills we already have? With the way things are trending, we're struggling. And that carries over into our personal lives. We all know that being a security professional can be stressful. The average tenure for a CISO, for example, it's 42 months. And too often, CISO stands for Chief Information Scapegoat Officer. So we need to start by finding the right balance and, and start by facing some hard facts. We need to think differently. We can no longer think in checklists when our attackers think in graphs. We need to tell the vendor community, do more for us. We need to break down security silos. And as the focus of our session today, we need to consciously take an adaptive approach to automation that minimizes the risk to our organization while helping it reap the rewards. Now, let's go deeper into automation and how it is manifesting along a process and data continuum. Please welcome to the stage Gartner Senior Director Analyst David Mahdi. This is not just about automation in security and risk. This is largely about the use of automation in your whole enterprise. And the pace of automation, of digital transformation in your enterprise is accelerating because of huge benefits, including efficiency, scalability, and consistency. In a word, value. In this fluid and rapidly transforming world, traditional security approaches to identify, protect, detect, respond, and recover are no longer going to be enough. This belief spurred Gartner to create CARTA, the Continuous Adaptive Risk and Trust Assessment Model. In a CARTA approach, security and risk decisions must be context-aware and adaptable. Risk tolerance and trust levels must be dynamically assessed. Identity and authentication must be ubiquitous, extending beyond people to endpoints and anything that touches the enterprise, wherever they are. Visibility must extend across the entire infrastructure and the technology stack to include operational or field locations wherever digital activities take place. Finally, security and risk management must be an all of enterprise effort, from early development to product sunset to the shop floor and to the supply chain. And for all of these things to exist, process and data automation are needed. Just like security and risk, automation is not a binary concept. We can't just press a magical button automate or don't automate. Automation sits on a continuum of sophistication and complexity. And it can use a number of techniques, either standalone or in combination. This is not a roadmap. There are valid reasons to be anywhere on the continuum. For instance, RPA, or robotic process automation, currently works best in task-centric environments. But process automation is evolving to increasingly more powerful bots and eventually to autonomous process orchestration. Predictive analytics relies on techniques including modeling, regression, forecasting, and pattern matching. These elements help answer the question, what is likely to occur? With the addition of machine learning techniques, we're moving forward to prescriptive analytics. These help answer the question, what should be done? Then, then there's AI. Security vendors like to wave the artificial intelligence flag whenever they can these days. But security professionals should be looking for augmented intelligence to secure their environment. Augmented intelligence includes a family of approaches and disciplines that apply rapidly advanced techniques and logic-based techniques. These include things like machine learning to interpret events, support and automate decisions, and take actions. We must balance risk and trust adaptively to navigate our place on the automation continuum in order to deliver value. 
Some automation will be ad hoc, where few automation tools are used informally or in specific use cases. We see this in privacy impact assessments. Most organizations start by conducting the process manually through a series of spreadsheets and questionnaires. This quickly becomes unmanageable. Applications with easy-to-use APIs have now been developed to automate these privacy impact assessments. They track the process from initiation to completion or escalate to a human for remediation. Some functional automation will formally automate the most important aspects of a process. And we're starting to see this in security operations centers, where AI can provide enhanced human support. This is just the beginning. There's lots of opportunity ahead. For example, many of you already have automated playbooks for incident response. The system can initiate a change username password request that orchestrates several approval processes. It also automatically puts old usernames and passwords on a watch list. When we have high assurances of risk with well understood remediation actions, it makes sense to fully automate. For example, automatically quarantining sensitive data that's exposed publicly. But any automation effort introduces risks. Automating an erroneously you know, configuration in the cloud could quickly replicate to thousands of virtual machines. This creates a security nightmare for organizations and a gold mine for attackers. AI systems interacting with each other create brand new emergent effects that today very few have had a chance to study. Fancy new algorithms that run on untrusted operating systems won't be of much help if someone has already used a rootkit to take control of the underlying system. And some algorithms already demonstrated biases, implicit or otherwise, of their creators. This will create constant tension, but that's OK. To orchestrate and champion value protection and empower value creation, our job is to recognize and manage the tension and find our place on the automation continuum. Now let's see how automation is coming to life in three disciplines. Resilience is about how does an organization respond and recover from a business disruption. There's a wide variety of automation tools that help organizations manage their resilience risk. On the planning side, there are business continuity management program solutions. On the execution side, organizations tend to use tools like crisis management solutions, as well as risk intelligence and hazard alerting kinds of software. There are a number of challenges that we talk about with our clients. The first thing is how mature is the organization? Because throwing software and automation at a problem that's broken or a process that isn't really thought through and well designed only highlights how broken that process is. The second one is how much of the problem do you want to address? It's the boil the ocean problem. So are you going to implement these solutions for the whole of the enterprise, for just one business unit or one set of scenarios? There are many benefits in managing resilience risk through automation. The first one is at the time of crisis. You're able to respond and recover in a faster way because the automation itself brings more information faster to the response and recovery process. The next benefit is being able to deliver that information to management gives them a much bigger picture and a much more complete picture of the risks facing the organization. One of the common business problems we see is harmonizing of compliance controls. The security and risk management leaders are always looking for a way to make it easier to map controls to their policies and also to map requirements between standards and regulations. It's a very common problem because it's not only one that requires one-time mapping, but also requires ongoing maintenance as regulatory environments change and also as businesses change uh, whenever there are mergers and acquisitions. What we started seeing is the use of natural language classification in regulatory change management and having suggestions to start looking at business processes. 
One of the most advanced form of automation that we see today as applied to controls mapping is one where suggestions for potential controls are served up to customers or to a risk professional with a confidence rating next to it. Based on which control might apply the most to you, you have the ability to make decisions in a much quicker and a far more accurate manner because this is advisory and intellectual data that has already been fed into the database ahead of time. I want to talk about deception and how automation can be applied to deception. A client reached out to us and they explained what they wanted to do. They wanted to do what they would call the ghost enterprise. And their goal was to detect an attacker, confuse the attacker, slow down the attacker and observe the attacker. And in order to do that, they had deception tools that were running in their environment. Deception tools are essentially an ecosystem of fake systems and fake files and folders, fake users and fake environment that an attacker would be enticed to touch, uh, would be enticed to attack. And all the alerts were coming from all over the organization were flowing to their SIM tool and from the SIM to their orchestration and automation tool, the SOAR, Security Orchestration, Automation and Response. That was a very interesting uh, uh, use case of how you can take different technologies, in this case the SIM as, as a source of alerting, another point technology, another piece of technology called deception, and how via automation you can, in real time, reconfigure your environment with very, very minimum supervision from a SOC analyst. Security is a process, it's not an event, it's a process. And to formalize this process as a continuously improving and an and iterative phase of how to improve your security posture is very, very powerful. Powerful examples of the strategic use of automation, right? Which leads to the more targeted question. What does automation mean to my role? I'm already too busy as it is defending against all these threats, dealing with auditors, having to report up the chain. If you're the chief security officer, digital risk officer, or business continuity leader, you have a lens that is broader than simply information security. Whether you are in retail with point of sale systems, finance with ATMs, or the Department of Defense with instrumented and connected weapon systems, your risks go way beyond enterprise systems. Because risks, vulnerabilities, and threats now live along a cyber physical connected chain where it's not just security and risk, it's security, risk, and safety. You will benefit from risk-based decisions with real-time information. Automation efforts will improve your situational awareness and enhance your decision-making. For example, dashboards that can ingest multiple data flows, or integration platforms that offer visibility across the entire enterprise. If you're an information security manager, you and your teams are implementing strategies. You're the first line of defense. You're updating architecture. You're managing cloud providers and working with the contracts department. So you will benefit from automating processes to work on what matters most. This means optimizing workflows focusing on data integrity, dealing with systems integration, because any automation you introduce will increase complexity. But tools like low-code application platforms can help. If you're a security technical professional, you are the front line, monitoring network traffic, feeding or reviewing dashboards. You want to stay on the leading edge, and you don't want to do work that can be automated. So you push your enterprise to the right on the continuum. Become the new expert on one of these innovative automation technologies. And 
putting employees, customers, and citizens at the center of the conversation, they actually shouldn't have to focus on security risk or safety. They should be concerned with their own value protection and creation. They want things to work seamlessly, knowing that everything has been designed to keep attacks at bay. Keep them safe. Protect their privacy. Optimize their digital interaction. And make their life better. So they are expecting some level of automation to help with self-service and remove friction in their user experience. Finding the right balance of automation on the journey to value is not an abstract concept. To illustrate this, let's look at the three scenarios I promised you earlier. These are real-world examples of efforts you can adopt as soon as you get back to the office. For our first scenario, let's look at identity. Today, identity is everything. It's the new perimeter. And in the converging cyber-physical world we now live in, we need to get it right. Whether we're talking about access to facilities, endpoints, data networks, and whether we're talking about human-to-machine or machine-to-machine -machine interactions, how can we balance risk and trust when it comes to identity? How do we know it isn't a dog on the other side of the transaction? What's the possible of automation here? We need to scale from unwieldy, inefficient practices that aren't fit for purpose and that put an undue burden on employees to an adaptive, integrated, trust and risk-based approach that's seamless for users. We must leverage existing capabilities like multi-factor authentication and automate these processes in such a way that we can deliver an easy-to-use, scalable user experience. Meet Paul. Paul works for a field engineering company. His job entails logging on to enterprise systems wherever and whenever he's dispatched, and his company is growing by leaps and bounds. So every week, his organization is looking to hire more people, just like Paul. The security and risk team, they're struggling to ensure only the right amount of people, the right people, access the appropriate information on the appropriate systems. And these people are all over the place at any given point in time. They need to find an efficient way of managing all of this, while, of course, keeping costs under control. And it needs to be transparent to the users. So the security and risk team decides to use user experience or UX techniques and have Alice shadow Paul for a day so she can see firsthand what his work environment looks like. That way, they can design security with the user needs in mind. Now, Alice knows all too well that a key building block of identity and access management is trust. And just saying no to everything or complicating access to systems is not going to create value for a company, especially a business built on mobility. As Paul and Alice get to the first dispatch site, and Paul opens his laptop, to access the enterprise systems for data entry, Alice notices something very troubling. Paul's screen has several sticky notes with passwords written on them, and the smart card is permanently lodged into the smart card reader. User authentication, not exactly a seamless experience for Paul here. We know we all love passwords, right? Guess who loves them even more? bad actors. Users hate passwords. Attackers love them, particularly weak or obvious passwords, like 0000. zero, 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 zero. Yet we keep using this approach over and over and over again, and problems keep happening across security and usability, even though we know that bad actors are going straight 
for these types of credentials since they're low-hanging fruit. So Alice decides it's time to take a harder look at that workflow. Let's seek a better balance between user experience and security. You know, as Paul accesses his digital resources, he needs to know where he is going and be prompted with only the right amount of information. But again, the last thing we want is to mandate multiple lengthy passwords for various systems. So instead, Alice needs to focus on making things easier for Paul by using existing capabilities. For instance, by using a type of multi-factor authentication called Mobile Push, which uses Paul's mobile device for authentication. This way, when Paul confirms requested transactions on his mobile device, the company can get a higher level of assurance that it really is him behind that transaction. Specifically, this allows the organization to maintain trust while balancing that ease of use for the individual. Paul, in this case. As Alice shadows Paul and sees the extent and complexity of field engineering tasks he has to juggle in a day, Alice realizes that while this is a great solution, as the company grows, as more people and systems are onboarded, and we're not going to be able to scale this, the security team can't track this all ourselves. They need to augment this approach with aggregated session authentication, meaning they need to create an intelligent risk engine that will collect and analyze information about user behavior, geolocation, and devices, and then perhaps even correlate that information with alerts and external threat data, providing a real-time snapshot of the risk associated with each authentication session. This delivers an adaptive access approach where people like Paul would be prompted when needed or would be just granted access when logging onto a trusted system at a trusted location. This gives us that balanced risk engine that's neither too restrictive nor too lax. So as the day draws to an end, Alice has a much better understanding and appreciation for field engineer like Paul's needs. And Paul feels great that someone cares enough to learn about the pain points he deals with every day and that negatively impact his productivity. As we just discussed, identity is the foundation for all other security controls, especially as the business moves to the cloud. Identity decisions are critical, and so is our data, how we grant access to it, how we keep track of it, and how we protect it. Historically, we've relied on manual processes and human decisions for all of these. That might have been OK in the pre-digital and pre-automation era, but today, every business is a data generation powerhouse. There's too much data for any human to understand or fully comprehend. As the amount and value of data increases, we need to balance human and fully automated processes in order to tackle this beast. This is Amy. Amy is a CISO at a healthcare provider. Her company is rapidly migrating its data and applications to multiple cloud services. Recently, Amy had an epiphany. She can use automation to drive consistency, scalability, and efficiency. But she sees that the default access control models for infrastructure as a service and software as a service are very different. Both models can be mistake prone, but for different reasons. Infrastructure cloud providers offer varieties of data storage objects. These objects have access controls that default to a secured state. Only the owner of the data has any access at all. Other access must be manually granted and can be confusing. To add to this complexity, SAS file shares are usually wide open by default. This enables collaboration, so curtailing these services is not an option. Amy realizes she needs multiple solutions. Using the automation continuum, she develops two scenarios. The first is the use of 
fully automated access control management in infrastructure cloud. This is where there's little variation in the needs to control access. The second is the use of augmented intelligence with SaaS. In these environments, there's significant variation in the needs for access. So this drives the usefulness of a human supported by some machine learning to ensure adequate controls and availability. Amy can use a cloud access security broker to classify data and then devise a mechanism for users to request exceptions depending on risk and data classification levels. The CASB can check their access control lists. First, she's checking that no object has been configured to be publicly accessible unless there's a business justification. The CASB automatically scans every new and existing object and issues an alert. Next, Amy can identify and classify data and files. While not perfect, automated content scanning removes much of the drudgery and allows employees and contractors to focus on their tasks. Now, they don't have to worry about whether or not they're making the right security decisions. The CASB can also scan the contents of these objects and apply classifications to the data. This all comes together using data management automation in cloud environments, all while balancing the machine and human elements. Not only does Amy use the continuum to evolve her own thinking, she artfully uses it as a tool to represent the investments and benefits to her CFO. By describing risks in business terms and highlighting the criticality of balancing humans and machines, her business-friendly approach provides a much better outcome. Earlier, we discussed automation as an enabler. But we also recognize that automation introduces risk. Meet John. John is a digital channels director for an electric utility company. His team is setting up an automated service that allows customers to sign up for an electricity contract via chatbot. The chatbot interacts with the customer and collects the information to, needed to create the contract. It then provides the order information to an RPA that interacts with the necessary enterprise systems and applications and creates a contract that the customer then signs. RPAs are already all around us. And the RPA software market is growing at more than 40% per year. This new service means no more waiting on the phone for a free operator and no more tedious forms filling. But here is where things get complicated. This service, like most others in the digital business age, runs on software. And to develop this modern software, John needs to follow his company's new DevOps process. The application will have a complex flow between all the systems it connects. It will be built with multiple APIs, communicating with a variety of applications and services, which all adds up to more complexity. John realizes his project could turn into a security nightmare, and he has no security expertise on the team. If he could provide thorough security testing for the software, perhaps he would feel better, but security testing will slow everyone down. And he's on a tight schedule. He would have to come up with multiple test cases, and the scanners take a long time to crawl and understand how an application works. So how can John and his team apply another layer of automation to make sure they are both preserving and creating value for the company. By adopting a DevSecOps approach, a process rich in automation, the ultimate goal is achieving DevSecOps with a silent sec for security. That is embedding security in the process from the beginning without creating any negative impact on the process itself. Enter the Interactive Application Security Testing, or IAST. It's an innovative, automated testing technique that observes the behavior of the application from the inside. 
The combined teams can piggyback security testing onto quality assurance testing without adding anything. The agent within the application will see, for example, that the quality analysis test case filled in a form on a page correctly, but that form did not have input validation. This represents a priority one vulnerability that can lead to a data breach and must be fixed. But wait, there's more. <laughs> the team also realizes that in their dynamic environment, they can't just rely on a few automation tools. The automation continuum must always be complemented by the human. Enter the security champion with her automation toolkit. The security champion is a developer, not on the security team, but with some training in security, usually around areas where developers commonly make mistakes. She can act as a coach for the other developers, allowing them to ask a teammate for help, rather than ignore security altogether. This role is a critical interface between the security teams and the development teams because it speaks both languages. She can help you recognize which automation tools will serve you best. Many of the organizations that have adopted a security champion have found that they have shortened their time to remediate as well as time spent on their continuous integration and continuous delivery pipeline. With the right balance of automation and human intervention, enterprises can deliver a great new service without slowing development down. So there you have it. Three additional examples of the application of automation. Identity, data, new service development, this morning, we shared with you some key ways the world is changing around us and why automation is inevitable and will follow a continuum. You've seen how mod automation is already manifesting in the world and, importantly, some implications for key roles in security and risk management. All these data points and ideas shared with you this morning illustrate how security and risk professionals can deliver value while managing security, risk, and even safety. Value. Yes, value is the true north. Relish your role as a champion and orchestrator of value protection. Embrace an even more exciting role as enabler of value expansion and even new value creation. Focus on what matters. Decide what to empower others to handle and what to let go of in identity, with data for new service development and beyond. Because when we do, we will realize the promise of automation in the service of your enterprise, technology in the service of humans and people realizing the promise of meaningful careers as security and risk professionals. This is how we're going to write a new and exciting chapter in security and risk. Thank you, and enjoy this year's Security and Risk Management Summit. Please welcome to the stage Gartner Research and Advisory Vice President Analyst and your conference chair, Jeffrey Wheatman. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Cattell, Beth, and David. I love these concepts, and I am really, really psyched about moving along the automation journey with all of you. Good morning, and welcome again to Gartner's 25th Annual Security and Risk Management Summit. It has been a privilege and an honor to serve as conference chair for the second year. And I am incredibly excited about this year's gathering. 
Just to reiterate, this is the first of seven global security and risk management conferences. Make sure you ask your leadership if you can join us somewhere else. Sydney, in particular, in August is beautiful. Digital business continues to be the key driver for all of your organizations. If anything, it's accelerated even more dramatically since last year's conference. Of course, with any new opportunity, there comes new risk. And as our organizations head down the road of digitalization, it's our job, it's your job, and your job, and your job, and your responsibility to identify, assess, prioritize, and treat all of these new risks. And don't forget the old ones, because they are not going away anytime soon. And we need to do it now, not tomorrow, not next month, and certainly not next year. And unfortunately, we often need to do it with fewer people than we would like. This morning's keynote focused on the power of automation. Throughout the conference, we're going to broaden our horizons to include all of the aspects of the security and risk profession. And we've organized it into five programs targeted at all of your roles. We also have six virtual tracks for those of you in mid-sized enterprises, education, finance and banking, public sector, of course, healthcare, and we have a brand new updated version of our diversity and inclusion virtual track. We know how much you love to hear from distinguished and accomplished guest speakers. And this year, for our Silver Summit, we have four amazing guests. Join us tomorrow morning at 8.30 for a conversation with Michael Chertoff. Mr. Chertoff's distinguished career includes stints as U.S. Circuit Court Judge, Federal Prosecutor, Assistant U.S. Attorney General, and Secretary of Homeland Security. I'm also very excited that Dr. Steve Robbins, who is a global expert in diversity, inclusion, and cultural competency, will be joining us on Wednesday morning to talk about a topic that is both critical to our success and equally elusive. What is culture? Wednesday afternoon, the fantabulous Pat Lencioni will be here. Pat is a notable expert in executive team development and organizational health. He's an author of numerous books, most notably The Five Dysfunctions of a Team. Pat's going to talk to us about what it means to be a team player. And after all, we don't do this by ourselves. We are all leaders of and members of teams. Thursday morning, retired Air Force Colonel Nicole Malakowski will be joining us. Colonel Malakowski has a long and storied background. She was the first female pilot selected to fly as part of the U.S. Air Force Air Demonstration Squadron. Better known as the Thunderbirds, Colonel Malakowski is going to help us understand how to effectively deal with change. The only consistent thing is that it's always changing, and it's an ever-present challenge for all of us. We also love to hi highlight some of the research that comes from outside of our role, outside of security and risk management. Daryl Plummer, Distinguished VP Analyst, Chief of Research, and Chief Gartner Fellow, will be joining us Tuesday afternoon to talk about why disruption is useful. And he's going to do that through highlighting seven disruptions you probably don't know are coming. Don't miss any of these sessions. In addition to all of the Gartner speakers and guests we bring to the stage, we know all of you love to see what your peers are doing 
and you love to interact with them in less structured environments. We know you love practical case studies. We have six great practitioners this week that are going to highlight their pragmatic advice on best practice and how to achieve your goals. Please make sure you show them your support and attend these great sessions. We also have numerous opportunities for you to interact with and meet with your peers. Make sure you avail yourselves of every opportunity to do so while you're on site. This is your community. Live it. Love it. Be a part of it. Attend a roundtable, a meetup, or have a well-deserved beverage or snack while checking out all the cool technology and tools in the exhibit showcase. Security and risk leaders from near and far congregate here this week, and there is a wealth of knowledge and experience for you to tap into. Make sure you download Gartner's Conference Navigator, where you can get the latest media, including the slides from this morning's keynote, updated schedules, and provide us feedback. Make sure you use social tags on Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, and Facebook, and we've already seen some of you have already done so in response to the keynote. Let everyone know what you're learning in real time. And let's face it, sitting in sessions and meetings is the main reason why you're all here. But when it's all done, don't go back to your room and watch TV. We have great events every evening while you're here. If you want to learn more about the Gartner experience, make sure you stop by the Gartner Zone. Or if you get stuck, confused, or just have a quick question, we know there's a lot going on here. Make sure you stop by and ask the conference concierge, and they will answer any and all of your questions. Importantly, as you engage with everything that the summit has to offer, please make sure you tell us, how is it working for you? We value your opinion. Gartner is a data-driven organization. And we use that data, your feedback, to improve the event. Please fill out your evaluations for all the sessions you attend. And it's easy, because you can do it right in the Conference Navigator app. And if you use the overall survey button in your app, don't forget to grab your very own Gartner Bear. Someone owes me 50 bucks. Oh, there we go. All right. <laughs> On behalf of myself and the hundreds of amazing people that helped bring this conference to fruition, thank you and welcome. <laughs>